In the past few weeks, three of the big four accounting firms have been in the headlines for cyber incidents. These are large, well-resourced companies full of risk professionals, including some that provide security consulting services. So how is it that even these experts can get popped? Well, I've worked closely with all four of the big four firms in the past seven years. I have many colleagues, former classmates and friends of these companies, and let me tell you, they're no slouches. That it can happen to them, and by the way, it's also happening to tech giants with $2 trillion market caps, is a real-life case study in some security cliches. We're all targets. There's only two types of companies, the ones that know they've been breached and the ones that don't. It's not if, but when. And defenders need to be flawless. Attackers only need to get it right once. And while these are cliches to the security community, I find that they're still not well known or understood outside that group. So for a generalist audience, in this video, I'd like to walk through 10 reasons that cybersecurity is hard. In addition to creating awareness, I'm also hoping this helps eliminate the stigma that if you get hacked, you're a bad defender. Not true. Even a great security program can be hit by an apex predator. It's not good enough to only identify and protect. You also need to be able to detect, respond, and recover. Here's an agenda of the 10 differences I've come up with, and I'll drill into each one, starting at the top. Technology is everywhere. It's inherently flawed. It's rarely secure by default. It's complicated. Cyber is a dynamic threat, not static. It's a silent killer. Economics drive more actors and capability. We're in early innings, the science isn't settled. There's a skill shortage and what I miss. Starting with number one, technology is everywhere. Every company is a software company. We have a daisy chain of sensors and servers and endpoints on the edge and in the cloud. And these make our attack surface and cyberspace large and growing, scope is big. Number two, technology is inherently flawed. I like Yuri's summary here, and I really like that he's asking the question, why is security hard? All systems fail, and all systems are vulnerable. It says here, since 98, 200,000 vulnerabilities have been discovered in software. And of course, that's just what's reported. Many are undiscovered O days. In 2022 alone, Microsoft patched 1,200 vulns in its products. On the right, we've got an export from CISA's known exploited vulnerabilities database. It's got 161 vendors with 981 vulns. And those vendors are recognizable brand names that we depend on day in and day out. And the problem here isn't only that there are bugs in code and humans are fallible. It's that the internet was first built on the assumption that its users could trust each other. Its protocols were designed to communicate between known parties. It was the opposite of zero trust. And with any system depending on an element of trust, there's an opportunity for misuse by threat actors. Three, technology is rarely secure by default. I like the example of ISP modem routers for this. In February, and I made a video about this, the NSA provided guidance for securing home networks. And it has this line here saying to consider using a personally owned routing device that connects to your ISP provided modem. Well, why can't I just trust the appliance my ISP gave me? Well, because it's built to be plug and play, frictionless for the user, to not be too expensive, to compete with other ISPs, and to reduce costly returns and calls to tech support. Unfortunately, this becomes short-term gain for long-term pain when consumers get hacked because their router isn't configured to be secure. It's left with all the windows open and the doors unlocked. So next, I've got the White House in July launching its cybersecurity labeling program to protect consumers. It picks on home modems again. It says, we need an immediate effort to help people with consumer grain routers. These are high risk and if compromised can be used to eavesdrop, steal passwords and attack other devices on the network. In April, we had American and Five Eyes country agencies collaborating on this problem. It says in the headline, shifting the balance of cybersecurity risk with principles and approaches for security by design and default. The idea is to have devices secure out of the box to make consumers acutely aware when they deviate from safe default settings. But it's hard to blame consumers and businesses in this shared responsibility model from having insecure configurations because number four, technology is complicated. At last count, there are 3,500 security vendors. And the products from those 3,500 vendors are all over the place. They're for providing data, application, endpoint, network, and perimeter security. They've got to do it on-prem, in public cloud, and in private cloud. And they need to cover each phase of the cybersecurity framework, identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. It's a fan, it's defense in depth, and it has many complicated layers. Number five, cyber is a dynamic threat, not static. In Fire Doesn't Innovate, it talks about how fire used to be a huge problem for society. 
For example, there was the Great Chicago Fire that killed 300 people and wiped out 17,000 buildings. But then over the decades, people were able to study fire, make rules, regulations, establish fire departments, smoke detectors, awareness training. And this allowed society to safely bring this dangerous element into all of our homes so that we could benefit from it to stay warm and to cook our food. But the risk of fire is easier to manage than cyber risk because it's static. It always wants the same three things, fuel, heat, and oxygen, that's it. And fire isn't a conscious being that can innovate to bypass the controls and measures we put in place. Cyber, on the other hand, is an arms race of innovation for complicated technology between attackers and defenders. As a result of this race, the landscape is constantly changing and cybersecurity professionals need to be continuously learning. Number six, cyber is a silent killer. Unlike when you get your car stolen, when your digital identity is compromised or when hackers get into your network, oftentimes you don't know it. There's no smashed window or missing car. Your password, social insurance number, and emails are still where you left them. But the crooks now have a copy or now they have access to these digital and tangible assets. And they might wait months or years to weaponize them. For example, some victims of email compromise had hackers monitoring their emails for months or even years until the day came when there was a big online payment. For example, they had a down payment or were selling a business or an asset or receiving an inheritance. And they only found out they were breached when the money never came. It was stolen by patient hackers. Number seven, economics drive more actors and capability. The cost of cybercrime went from $3 trillion in 2015 to $6 trillion in 2021, and is forecasted to get to $10.5 by 2025. That's from Cybersecurity Ventures. Then below, I've got Night Dragon with what happened in 2022, saying that in the past year, there was $6 trillion in losses from cyber attacks, which compared to $400 billion in market opportunity for cybersecurity vendors. Anything counted in the trillions is a crazy high number, and these economics are material. Number eight, early innings. The science isn't settled. Here's Night Dragon again with Evolution of the Threat. And as usual, I've got links to everything I reference in the video description. So Night Dragon's saying that the danger level of cyber threats was low in the 90s when it came on the scene with hacktivism. And then it, it rose gradually with cybercrime and then higher danger levels getting into ransomware and terrorism. And this chart was from 2018 and certainly in the past five years, we've seen this danger trend continue to ramp up. A key takeaway here is that we're in early innings. The cyber threat is fairly new and the science isn't settled. And that's where Daniel Meester comes in from unsupervised learning, saying that security is alchemy, unlike accounting, which is chemistry. Accounting's much older. We don't have our arms around yet. What are the inputs and outputs in cyber to be secure? Number nine, there's a skill shortage. This rapidly growing field will have a projected three and a half million unfilled jobs by 25, by 2025. Why is that? Well, hiring managers want people with experience. New entrants don't have experience and it's a chicken and the egg problem. And I think for the GRC role portion of those cyber jobs, a lot of people in business and accounting would be a great fit. They, they might just not know it yet. Number 10, what did I miss? Please leave a comment. Let me know what I missed, what I got wrong, what I got right. I've been in this field for about three years and I want to keep learning. Once we have the problem statement to find of why cybersecurity is hard, we can start to solve it. So thanks for listening to my rant here. That was, that was fun. I hope you found it helpful to maximize awareness and minimize stigmas. Thanks for watching. Be safe. Be well.